So my guest is Suzanne Clark, the CEO of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and the purpose of our conversation today is to discuss the mission of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, its organization, the membership, and really how local chambers of commerce are part of the fabric of communities. So Suzanne, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time for this short conversation. Uh, so, no, thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to join you. Thank you. Well, first, share your journey to become the CEO of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. How did you accept this role and where did you come from? Well, thank you for that. You know, I've had a couple of different opportunities in my life. I worked in the trade association business earlier in my career. I then ran a private media company for a private owner. And I was an entrepreneur who built, founded and built and sold a company. And so really having that whole experience helps me represent the ecosystem of the U.S. Chamber that helps represent small business, large business chambers, associations, and, and also has a global orientation. So I guess you could say that representing business and job creators is kind of in my blood. Yeah, definitely. So tell us, what is the role and the mission of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce and how is it structured in D.C., but also across the U.S. and, and around the world? Sure. So, you know, we wake up every day believing that jobs are really important to families, to communities, to our national security. And so we wake up every day and say, what can we do to help create space for job creators, business leaders to solve problems, grow the economy and, and win the future? And we do that by working with thousands of state and local chambers across the country, more than 130 American Chambers of Commerce abroad, trade associations, hundreds of thousands of small businesses, and 80% of the Fortune 100. And you could say, well, what do they have in common? And what they have in common is they need an environment where they can be successful. So we do that on Capitol Hill, we do it in state capitals around the country, and we do it in the courts, whatever it takes to help businesses succeed. So that that's a, that's incredible, and it's really the the fabric of our communities, and it just uh, empowers job creation. Job creation is really the the key to uh, lifting everyone up and uh, solving so many problems. So, who are the members? You you touched a little bit on that. Who are the members of the chambers of commerce, and how do they work together to identify common goals and priorities for the chambers? Since there are so so many different sizes and types of businesses. Well, it's quite a diverse group, right? What they have in common is wanting to support families and communities, grow their businesses, serve their customers, solve problems. So what we find in state and local chambers across the country is that they know the fabric of their community. They know the business leaders in their community of every size, shape of business, every sector, but also every role in the company. At the U.S. Chamber, we meet business leaders every day, whether that's CEOs of really large companies or entrepreneurs with you know, one person and they're hoping to hire a second. And we listen to them is really how we learn. We listen to chambers in every geography. We listen to businesses who come to visit us here in Washington. And we try to learn what public policies they really need to advance free enterprise, free markets, and, and really all the things we believe are core to democ democracy in this country. Are there like some, uh, what are the key pillars of public policies that, that uh, business, that help businesses grow, start, grow, advance? You know, everybody's a little bit different in what they need at the particular industry that they're in or the cycle that they're in in their business. What we're hearing the most about right now is a pretty severe worker shortage. And even if you can find workers, the real need for upskilling and, and better education. So we hear a lot about that. We're hearing more about crime and public safety from business owners right now. How do they keep their employees and their customers safe? That's kind of new and surprising. Uh, there's always a big regulatory agenda. We tend to try to keep the government in their lane. You know, government has an important role to play, for example, in fighting crime and ensuring public safety. Uh, but they can go beyond their staff 
statutory authority, in which case we tend to move in, try to lobby them directly, talk to them directly, and if we have to, take them to court to say you're just going too far, the regulation is too much. So there's worker shortage, there's crime, there's regulatory overreach, and there's trade. What can we do to open up markets so that the people who make things here can sell more of them overseas? So I could, I could list another couple hundred, but I might bore you and your listeners. No, that's a that's a good uh, a good synopsis here of the the focus. So, how does the U.S. Chamber of Commerce work with the state Chamber of Commerce? There's multiple levels of chambers of commerce. So, share a little bit how that communication or interaction uh, occurs. Sure. So. You know, there are thousands of chambers across the country and we work with them in different ways. Sometimes it's traveling to see them, as I did in Chicago last week, to really listen to the Illinois Chamber, the Chicagoland Chamber about what they're hearing, how their issues might be different with state and local government or their issues might be different on the ground. You can imagine that uh, border cities have different issues than farm cities, you know, or, or cities in the Northeast might be really different than a West Coast chamber. And so one way is to get out and listen to them. A second is to hold policy briefings for them. We can do that on Zoom like this, or we can show up in person or invite them here. We host a lot of the chambers here when they want to do fly-ins and reach people on the Hill. We provide programming for them if that's what they need. So it's really an intimate relationship where they serve on our committees. They help us make decisions. And we go out to them to speak to their businesses and learn from on the ground knowledge of what's going on out there. So uh, when your visits on the ground, how have you seen the local chambers work with communities to foster business growth and uh, create jobs and revitalize neighborhood? Do you have some good examples of what they do? Sure. I mean, I would give a good example in uh, Tulsa. You know, the Tulsa Chamber is run by a guy named Mike Neal. He's really on top of what economic development could mean for Tulsa. What does it mean to bring more jobs to the Tulsa community? And what does he have to do with the city leaders to create an environment where companies want to move there and stay there? What does that mean about schools, housing, parks, culture, uh, architecture? So what is the ecosystem that allows businesses to move there and to be successful? So he touches all of those areas in his effort to help job creators move to Tulsa and stay in Tulsa. Well, that's a really good example. So what advice, you know, in closing, I'd love for you to share some advice on um, for people to engaging with their local chamber of commerce in their state or their local communities, what type of leadership is needed, what's the vision, how can people, how can people engage and why should they engage with their local chamber? Well, thank you for that. And first, I would invite anyone to join us at uschamber.com to look at CO, our small business website. We have a lot of resources on policy issues, on what it takes to really have a thriving free enterprise system. And we would love for more people to get engaged. I think on the local level, what's so important is that voices are a little louder for free enterprise. You know, we live in a world where everyone's kind of outraged and no matter which political party you're in, the extremes on either side have a lot of anger, right? But business people aren't like that. We have to get things done. We have to solve problems. We have to keep serving our communities, our customers and our employees. And so what you really see, I think, at the local level are people just want to get things done, get things done for their community, get things done for their country. And there are a lot of ways that people listening can show up can advocate for free enterprise, for the importance of business, and can help support the local businesses that are getting off the ground. You know, we had record numbers of business startups in the last year. That was true nationwide, and it was true in communities across the country. So what do they need? They, a lot of times they need customers. I was with a new sneaker company. And everyone was saying, do you need investors? And she said, no, I need people to buy shoes so I can prove my numbers. So a lot of times when you show up at a chamber, they might need your advice. They might need your network. They might need your voice in an advocacy or grassroots way. Or they might need you to buy a pair of sneakers and, hope, and just help a local entrepreneur. 
Yeah, well, that's great. That's great. So the chambers are actually open to even startups and uh, and and new co newer companies, not just really large established companies. No, I think it's really again, it's an ecosystem, right? And yeah. the big companies and small companies are each other's vendors and customers, and suppliers, and the big companies grow. I mean, the small companies grow to be big companies. Now, there's been incredible movement in the Fortune 100 in and out of it. It's not the same companies decade after decade. So we have a bunch of small businesses coming to town the week of the 19th to do our Dream Big Awards and to really think about ideas that start small, but entrepreneurs who dream big and how do we give them the resources they need to create the jobs and fill the services that our country so desperately needs. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for this conversation and uh, and for introducing and reminding everyone of the Chambers of Commerce and to visit their, their uh, own local chambers. So thank you, Suzanne. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you very much.